and uh, I, I felt like it'd be a good idea to record myself reading it. We'll see if I'm inspired to add anything as we go. And uh, I hardly ever proofread my blog posts, so um, I just don't have time. I just keep rolling. The relative value is greater. I spend the time elsewhere. So we'll see if I find a typo here and I can go back and fix it. The title of the blog is Religious LARPing When the Real Thing Comes. So I don't bother defining LARPing. You can look that up. Live action role play. It's when a bunch of people wear costumes and pretend that they're in some situation. And it's a thing. People do this. All right. When I was a kid, there was a popular game for Nintendo called Mike Tyson's Punch-Out!, in this game, you're a little man fighting a procession of boxers. Some real, some made up, until you fought Mike Tyson. Luckily for 80s kids, the graphics of the game were bad enough that no one had the illusion that their success in Punch-Out predicted how successful they would be in real fights with the real fighters portrayed there. Imagine someone thinking that a scrawny little man could face and win against Mike Tyson in his prime. Imagine someone who thought that their game strategy and finger dexterity accurately predicted how they'd fare against Mike Tyson in the ring. Such a person, person would be so delusional in these things that you could rest assured that their entire lives overflowed with the same. You could accurately predict them to be a train wreck in many facets of their life. Suppose that, that uh, the game had become popular in a time when graphics were much better. Suppose it came out on a realistic VR platform. While the realism and immersion might be persuasive, clearly any sane person would recognize the fact that they could only experience the simulation when putting on the equipment. They would know that something that must be turned on and turned off and can be turned off isn't real. Now consider the religious world. Here we have billions of people who regularly immerse themselves in a set of ideas they really believe is the real thing. Yet, they don't apply them throughout their lives. They turn them on and off. They completely disregard the fact that their beliefs have no power to explain, endure, or influence so much of reality. They wantonly ignore the many obvious contradictions from their beliefs that surround them every single day. These people have extreme confidence in their foolishness, which has managed to fester on unabated in their lives until a special day arrives, the day they meet someone with the real thing. With a swift slice, the pieces of their belief that are founded on the rock are separated from the often majority portion that is built on the air. They're left in astonishment to choose whether to accept that most of their cherished beliefs and accumulated identity are lies or to proceed on in ever greater blindness. Few choose to draw nearer to God. They think little scrawny men can fight Mike Tyson in their prime. And when they come face to face with Iron Mike, they get punched out. Selected scriptures. Luke 6, 47 through 49. Whosoever cometh to me and heareth my sayings and doeth them, I will show you to, show you to whom he is like. He is like a man which built an house and digged deep and laid the foundation on a rock. And when the flood arose, the stream beat vehemently upon that house and could not shake it, for it was founded upon a rock. But he that heareth and doeth not is like a man that without a foundation built an house upon the earth, against which the stream did beat vehemently, and immediately it fell. And the ruin of that house was great. Ephesians 2.2 2, Wherein in time past ye walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, 
the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. John fifteen twenty four, If I had not done among them the works which none other man did, they had not had sin. But now have they both seen and hated, both me and my father. Ephesians four seventeen through 19 This I say therefore and testify in the Lord, that ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk in the vanity of their mind, having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart, who being past feeling have given themselves over unto lasciviousness to work all uncleanliness with greediness. 1 Nephi 14.7 for the time cometh, saith the Lamb of God, that I will work a great and a marvelous work among the children of men, a work which shall be everlasting, either on the one hand or on the other, either to the convincing of them unto peace and life eternal, or unto the deliverance of them to the hardness of their hearts and the blindness of their minds, unto their being brought down into captivity and also into destruction, both temporally and spiritually, according to the captivity of the devil of which I have spoken.